Our partners now ship about a billion CPUs uh, a month, or rather that's a billion chips containing CPUs. Uh, the graphics processors are still, um, you know, we're catching up. We will do about 700 million units this year. Can you tell me about that? Where's the factory? Why don't you make the chips here? What? So the, the factories in uh, Taiwan, in Austin, Texas, and China, and you know, all, all those sorts of places. So what happens is um, we design, say 25 years ago, literally the founders of ARM, people like Mike Muller, were taking a sheet of acetate and putting down tape strips on it, which is where the origin of the phrase tape out comes from and they made images of uh, a chip, which were then photo reduced and you, and you produce chips. Uh, what we do now is we write hardware, just like most people write software uh, in a special language, and then that uh, language is compiled uh, down to gates, AND gates, OR gates, NAND gates, all of that sort of thing. And uh, via the magic of uh, some software produced by some very clever tools companies, that's all then spat out, and it produces those pictures. Uh, they're called masks, and they cost about a million dollars, two million dollars each time you press print on one of those. Um, and then those are used as the basis of a, it's really a photography process, it's called photolithography, but it's really printing. And they print these incredibly, incredibly small features which are the chips. You mentioned some big numbers there. Like who has to make that call if it's costing millions to, to print these things? Who makes that call and says, yeah, let's go for it? So it's, it's broken down. So um, a modern complex chip uh, will contain an enormous number of components. Uh, and they don't all come from ARM by any means. So we will supply what we call IP, intellectual property. So we will design sections of that chip and those are our products. That's what we sell. Uh, which go to our partners. Our partners are then the guys who are really designing those chips and they'll say I'll have this CPU, I'll have this GPU, I'll connect it with this, I'm going to put my magic down in the corner here and some stuff around the outside and then they put it all together and they are the ones who eventually say go press print. But of course there are lots of gates along the way there to us giving it to them and us saying we think it's okay, um, or we think it's okay for limited production. Yeah, we think it's fine, you know, go, go for it big time. So there are a number of quality uh, barriers along the way which, uh, which have to be reached. And one of the big thing about selling IP is not that you're designing something, you're designing something that works and your partners can trust. So before it ever goes near silicon, we have simulated it um, millions and billions of times. And hopefully then it means that when you actually come to build it, it all works. I know there are some people out there who use things like Minecraft to do simulations or make logic gates and all this sort of stuff. Is this a bit like that, but on a massive scale? You're actually using the chips to, to practice using new potential chips. No, let me get that right. That's right. We are using chips, we're using computers running programs to simulate uh, the function of silicon gates and the way in which we put those gates together in a timing accurate uh, simulator fashion. And then there's all various other things we do as well, which is as well as simulate it logically, we simulate it electrically, which because we then feed in a model of what the chip is, the silicon process is going to look like. So our partners in the foundries, those guys who actually make chips, they tell us how that silicon works. You feed that into another model, you simulate it electrically, um, and yeah, it all comes good. And that's, that helps you know things like how, how hot it will run and things like that, I'm guessing? Yes, so um, uh, simulating how hot it goes is, is actually still very hard, um, but we do do it, obviously. Um, simulate how fast it will go um, is, is, is easier. Um, and simulate whether it uh, will be correct if the answer is one or zero uh, is, 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 is essential and we, we work on the basis of that. And the, and the chips are now so complex, so big and so massive that it's a progressive decomposition. So we will simulate very small blocks. When you get that correct, you put those blocks together, you make a bigger block. When you say that's correct, you put those together, you know, and finally you get a GPU. Um, 
and then you put that together with a CPU and some memory and some interconnect and you simulate that and then you give that to the partner and he puts more stuff on and he simulates that and eventually if he's feeling bold he says um, yeah get my checkbook out. For our audience who don't know what a checkbook is that's <laughs> something that old people used to <laughs> spend money with. So we make some IP blocks, there'll be other companies making some IP blocks then you sell it to a company that is making chips and they'll have some of their own IP. They put that all together, they make those chips and then they sell that to an OEM who makes a real consumer device, like, like a phone. So in Samsung's case, they might make their own chips and sell them to their division that makes phones. And then that division that makes phones might also buy chips from somebody else. They might buy chips from Qualcomm, say. And then some of these companies don't actually physically make the chips themselves. When they finally got the design sorted, they then give it to a company called a foundry, like TSMC, Taiwanese semiconductor company, and they make a huge proportion of the world's chips themselves. When it works, this chain has got experts doing what they're really good at, putting it together and making great products. A foundry brings to mind people in a very hot room with big hammers and oh, all right. sort of stuff, which I love the idea of, but would you say you're a bit like architects and you are yes. selling plans? Yes, absolutely. So uh, a lot of our design, so when our designers get really, really good, they get the job title of architect. And yes, sometimes when you go to other countries, your business card gets translated into man who builds houses. Um, but our architect in our industry means something um, quite senior, you know, a person uh, who is responsible for the design of a block. He might have some people working for him who are actually building parts of that block, but he's responsible for that overall design. And ultimately, yes, I think your analogy is very good. It comes to a set of plans. What we deliver to people is not, um, it's not bricks and mortar, uh, we deliver those plans to somebody who then builds that house. They might buy bricks from a number of different people. So th there, are, there are only really a handful of foundries in the world uh, who are making the modern silicon processes. So they will choose to have them built at one of those. Although ARM says we never make chips, actually we do make a very small number of uh, test chips. But a big, a big volume production run for us would be 500 chips. You know. That would be huge for us. And that's, that's like taking the, the testing to the next level, prototyping? Is it? Yes, so um, we do, I mean the thing about testing is um, if you do it all of one kind then you're building in a whole bunch of assumptions that you might not even know you're doing. So if you go down one direction, I'll simulate this, 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 this and this, and it works, you go, ah, oh, it's fine. And what you really want for best confidence is, right, I'm going to do this, but uh, actually, I'm going to do it from over here and I'll simulate it a completely different way and I'll come at it with a whole bunch of different assumptions. And if that still works, you think, oh, we might be onto something here. So we simulate, um, uh, we, we originally will model the design in, our, in a, um, a high-level language, so a, a software model. Then we write the hardware and simulate the hardware um, and we will do that in those racks and racks and racks of CPUs. Um, we will also put it into specialist hardware emulation machines. Uh, we will put it into FPGAs, uh, field programmable devices. Um, and, um, and, and we will also connect uh, existing chips with a particular IP block. So you know what this is like in real silicon. You're just adding in this little bit over here. We do that and you know, it's the more forms of testing and testing with different sets of assumptions, uh, the more likely it is that it's all going to work. For example, here's the table, here's the floor. Well, which bits of the floor and which bits of this table can I see? So you have to do a lot of matrix solving. To